this example, post office scheduling, is about figuring out how many employees to schedule different days of the week. Please pause the video and read this paragraph. Okay, so it says the workload at this post office varies depending on the day of the week. So on some days, they need to have more people working, and some other days, they need fewer employees. The table here tells you how many employees are needed according to the day of the week. So you can see on Mondays, they need at least 17 people. On Tuesday, they need at least 13 people, and so forth. So these are the minimum numbers of employees required. Now, it's okay to have more people than these, but it's not okay to have fewer people. Well, whoever is working, you have to pay them. So we would like to minimize the number of employees that have to be paid while still satisfying these minimum employee number requirements. Well, if people were like robots, we would just match these numbers. Tell 17 people to come on Monday, and tell 13 people to come on Tuesday, and so forth. Well, but they are not, and you are required to give them a decent schedule, working five consecutive days, and then two days off. For instance, an employee might work Monday through Friday, and then take Saturday and Sunday off. Or another employee could start the work week on Tuesday, work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then receive Sunday and Monday off. You could have people start on Wednesday and work through Sunday and then have Monday and Tuesday off. So you could have a variety of these five-day shifts. Potentially, how many different five-day shifts can you have? Right, there are seven days in a week, so there are seven shifts possible. For each day of the week, you could have a group of employees starting their shift that day. So it comes down to deciding how many people to assign for each five-day shift. So we could define the decision variables after the days of the week. Here are the decision variables. M will represent the number of employees starting five-day shift on Monday. So that's the number of people who work from Monday through Friday and then get started on Sunday off. And then T would be the number of people working from Tuesday through Saturday. And W would be the number of people working from Wednesday to Sunday, and so forth. The objective is to minimize the total number of employees. So that will be just the sum of the people in the seven groups. So all we would have to do is minimize the sum of the variables. So it would be minimize m plus t plus w plus th plus f plus sn plus su. As for the constraints, we need to make sure that there are enough people working each day. That is, for each day, number of employees available, that is, number of employees working, must be greater than or equal to the number of employees required. For instance, on Monday, number of employees available must be greater than or equal to 17. Uh, and we need similar constraints for all the other days. Now, speaking of Monday, what groups of employees will be available on that day? Well, there are the people who started their shift on Monday, so those people will be around on Monday. What about the people who start their shift on Tuesday? Uh, no, these guys work from Tuesday through Saturday. Let's see, how about the Sunday people? Sunday people work from Sunday through Thursday, and that includes Monday, so these guys will be around. So on Monday, okay, there will be Monday people, and not Tuesday, there will be Sunday people, and people who started Saturday, and Saturday through Wednesday, and then people who started Friday, going from Friday to Tuesday, and then Thursday through Monday, uh, but not Tuesday or Wednesday. So Tuesday people get Sunday and Monday off, and Wednesday people get Monday and Tuesday off. So we could see there would be five groups of people working on Monday, M-T-H-F-S-A-S-U. So here the number of employees available on Monday will be the sum of these five variables, M plus T-H plus F plus SA plus SU, and that should be greater than or equal to 17. 
So that will be the constraint for Monday. So for each day, to count the number of employees that are available, we could identify the groups that are working that day. Another way to put it is for each group, you know, for each shift, we could identify the days they will be working. So here, the rows will be the days of the week, and the columns will be the different shifts. Let's start with the first column. For the shift that starts on Monday, these guys will be around from Monday to Friday, so here they are. Now, people starting on Tuesday. Now, the people starting on Tuesday, that's T, is the name of the variable. This group will be there from Tuesday to Saturday, and then Wednesday, and then Wednesday. W, people will be there from Wednesday to Sunday, and then Thursday. These people work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, Friday, and this one. One, two, three, four, five. Saturday, SA for Saturday. And Sunday, people starting on Sunday, and then working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and that's it. So Sunday to Thursday. This gives us a nice table that identifies for each day of the week which groups are working that day. So for each day, there are five groups of people working. And to determine the number of people available, we could just add up the corresponding variables. So for Wednesday, we would say M plus T plus W plus SA plus SU must be greater than or equal to the 15, which is a minimum required number. Here you could see the corresponding constraints follow the same pattern as in this table. Now, for example, suppose there are four people assigned to each shift. That is, M is 4, T is 4, 4, 4. All the variables have the value of 4. Now notice that each day there are five groups of people. Since each term is 4, the left-hand side of each constraint will be, well, 5 times 4 is 20. So it will be 20, 20, 20, 20. 20, 20, so each day of the week there will be 20 people available in that case. And that's actually a feasible solution because that will satisfy all the constraints. Since 20 is greater than or equal to all these numbers. Uh, then, then the total number of employees will be, well, 4 times 7 is 28. Total will be 28. But this is not necessarily the minimum possible. We could probably get away with a fewer number of total employees. So we're going to put this into Excel and find that number. So we set up the Excel model here. You can see these cells are going to be the decision variables. Uh, that is a number of people starting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, and so forth. The objective function coefficients will go here. But you could see here the, in the objective function, the coefficients are just 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So here I could just put all the 1s. And then do the, the usual sum product of the 1s and the variables. And how about we just put some fours here as the test values. Notice here, we're just summing the variables. So I could have just done sum instead of sum product. So I could have just said uh, equal to sum of, of all these cells, and that would have worked fine. Now for the constraints, you can see that all the coefficients are ones and then zeros. So we're going to just kind of follow this bad pattern, you know, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so forth. So here we're going to go 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 5 ones. Then here is Tuesday. And so here is starting on Tuesday, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 
then one 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 then Thursday and then go over to Monday then starting Friday one 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 then starting Saturday Saturday Sunday and then go to Monday Tuesday and Wednesday last one Sunday starting on Sunday and then go Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so these are the coefficients for the left hand sides of the constraints and then here we put the sum product formula of the coefficients and the variables dollar signs close the parentheses then copy it down and greater than equal to copy that down and number required now let's copy this from the previous sheet right over here oh and how about we keep track of the surplus the excess number of employees left hand side minus the right hand side you could see that with this tentative solution each day there is some excess employees so you could tell we should be able to reduce the total number of employees now let's go to solver the objective over here do you want to maximize and minimize the total number of employees oh we want to minimize so don't forget to check off min changing variable cells are over here and the constraints the left hand sides here greater than or equal to the right hand sides and okay non-negativity simplex LP now now let's solve found the solution here is a solution do you see anything funny about this 6.33, 3.33 you could have six and a one-third people starting on Monday working through Friday I don't know maybe if there's a part-time person who might work one-third day or something well actually we have only full-time employees so we need to have integer solutions here and we know how to add an integer constraint let's do that We're going to say add and select the variables. Those guys should be INT and say OK. And let's check over in the options to make sure it's not going to ignore the integer constraints. So that part is not checked off. That's good. And we'll say OK and solve. So how many employees in total 23 employees are needed and that's the minimum possible number and here we could see uh, how many people should be assigned to each shift so you got six three three seven zero three one and you can see nobody will be assigned to the shifts that starts on friday well did you get the same numbers here maybe maybe not well it's possible that the solution you got might be different from the numbers here it turns out this problem has more than one optimal solution. Sometimes there's just more than one way to accomplish the objective. You might have different values for the solution, but the optimal objective value here should be the same. So as long as you got 23 here, then your solution is correct, even if the values here might be different. Here we can see how many people will be available, right over here, and following the recommendation here. This is a nice application of the linear programming method, and it is possible to extend this model to handle a combination of full-time and part-time people, and maybe take into account different wages and try to minimize the total wages that need to be paid and so forth, but we will leave those situations for another day for a more advanced class.